toss it and talk about Kiss, namely that Tommy Thayer spoke to Guitar World about the Kiss End of the Road tour. I'm going to cut right to the meat and quote this from the piece that I have right here. Uh, the guitarist is also sympathetic, to a point at least, toward the rigid stance some longtime fans have about seeing anyone but Ace Freely wearing the iconic Spaceman makeup, says Tommy, and I quote, I've been a fan for longer than probably most of these people, so I understand. He adds, though, but you can't expect things to be exactly how they were 40 years ago. That's a fantasy, so I don't let it bother me. I'm comfortable and confident with where I am and what I do. Well, from some people that I know, it does bother them privately. But uh, look, I, I've said this a thousand times, and I don't know how many other times I can say it. Uh, Tommy Thayer, I, I knew Tommy. I mean, I haven't, I haven't talked to him in a long time since this whole ridiculousness with me and Kiss has gone on. I'm sure he's probably banned from talking about to me or whatever. But you know, that ludicrous as all that is. But but Tommy, there's Tommy is a is a, is a fine guitar player, and he's a good guy. It's, none of this is anything directed at him for fans like me who have an issue with him doing this, which, by the way, he's been doing now for like 18 years. It's not his fault. He didn't make the decision to put on Ace's costume. So anybody that does have issues with this, directing it towards Tommy is ridiculous because he's just taking orders from above. Everyone, you're, you're, you're under a rock if you don't know that Kiss is run by Paul and Gene in that order. So they made the decision to not give him and Eric Singer their own identities and their own costumes. For Tommy to say a fantasy and nothing is what it is 40 years ago, I don't think anybody thinks that, that Kiss could go back to 77 again and, and they could put those four guys on stage and it could be you know great at this point in everyone, everyone's life. And by the way, that includes the... You know, Gene and Paul love to talk about the the diminished abilities of uh, of Ace and Peter. Well, <laughs> start to consider <laughs> what you guys got going on at this point. But that's another story. So nobody's looking for that. But what bothers people, and I've maintained, and I've said this before too, especially when it comes to Eric Singer, who I also know very well, if he's... If he didn't have that gig himself, would he be saying, whether publicly or privately, about somebody else dressed as Peter Chris singing Beth and playing would be brutal? I know the guy. He's outspoken as hell. I love that about him. I know both of these guys forever. Again, there's that whatever sort of, you know, because I was, you know, I have this opinion. God, they can't talk to me, but I've known him forever. They're good guys. They're great players. Nobody's arguing that. Nobody, in, in my opinion, I'm not even saying they shouldn't be in the band at all. The problem is that it came from above that the decision was made that these guys were going, that Gene and Paul thought instead of giving these guys their own identities like they did with Vinny, like they did with Eric Carr, they would instead initially at least try to sort of pedal them off as those guys and then eventually i'm not and i'm not saying that they didn't look but but in the early days there were people i know for a fact because i saw them and talked to them that went to kiss shows and didn't know it wasn't ace up there who don't follow things all that closely so the problem is when you take somebody's persona something that those two guys whoever owns it is irrelevant they created it it's associated with them it is an extension of what they developed. They designed the makeup. I don't care if they sold it. It's just a principal thing. And they decided, Gene and Paul decided, we're going to go this, this way. And you know what? Over time, they've sold it. I mean, they've got fans that will buy everything and anything they sell on any given day. And they also have a ton of casual fans who have no clue and don't know any better and don't care. But for me and a lot of others, it never, it doesn't sit right. And it still doesn't sit right. And it will never sit right for me. And that is the number one reason I checked out of KISS 18 years ago, 19 years ago. Because I am not going to see somebody else 
dressed as Ace or dressed as Peter, and that's what it is. I don't care. You can you can make it as generic as you want. Catman space. No, dressed as Ace, dressed as Peter, singing Shock Me, singing Beth ain't gonna happen for me. It's wrong. There's nobody that's going to convince me that that isn't wrong. That that is not a line that was crossed for me personally as a fan. Plenty of people that are okay with it or don't know any better. Have fun. But but nobody, I don't, I think sometimes people get confused. Sure, everybody would love to see some of these original guys come back for a song, a show, whatever. And by the way, I don't think that's going to happen, especially with Ace. But, but. It, you know, and I, I just think that the idea, though, that everybody should just be cool with. I mean, I brought the, I bring this up as a comparison. If Angus Young, if ACDC were going to do a big tour, right? And Angus Young couldn't be there. And they got another guy and dressed him as the schoolboy. Yeah, everybody okay with that? It's ridiculous. Got to be some line, <laughs> you know, what, where does the line get crossed? But to, to Gina Paul's credit, they are masters at selling everything and anything, and they found a way to make it as generic as possible to make enough people to make it profitable, not have a problem with it, and spell and and sell it and spin it in a way to justify it, but not to me. And the last thing I'll say, because I've talked about this so many times, is if those guys were their own characters, I'd be fine with it. I'd be absolutely fine with it. But that's not on them. That's not their fault that they're not. And I don't want to hear the argument that I've heard, well, what are we going to do? Make a guy a chicken and the other guy is going to be an ant man? Come on, man. You can be creative enough that you can come up with two other cool makeup designs. They, Give me a break. They came up with the Ankh. Give me a break. I mean, you know, with all the creativity and, and people out there, you're going to tell me you can't find another one or two uh, makeup designs. And, they, they, and, and look, this continues to be an issue. And, and this is, you know, Tommy got asked about this in this interview. And this continues to be an issue. 18, 19 years later. Why? Because I'm not the only one that feels this way by any stretch. There's a ton of musicians and other people that do that don't have the balls to say it. God, I've talked to a thousand of them. If I ever showed you text messages and emails and voicemails I've got from people that, you know, <laughs> please, that shared bills and stages with, with Kiss and what they've said, but no, nobody will, God forbid, say that publicly. So, I mean, it's just, it is an issue and it's going to keep coming up. And it also, honestly, is an issue that's uh, reared its head a lot of times and will continue to rear its head now with anyone hoping that Ace or Peter show up at one of these final shows. Why? Because do you think Ace or Peter are going to walk out on a stage and look at two guys dressed as them with the personas they created and throw their arm around them and say, hey, guys, look great while they're standing there in a, a T-shirt and jeans? <laughs> I mean, Ace has said this before. He, he, he has a, he, it, it's a tough thing for him. He, he, uh, I think, I, I think I've told this story before, but not a lot of people probably heard it and I don't, I think it's fine to say it because Ace and I actually just talked about it. Back in like 06, there was a VH1 show called Rock Honors. Took place in Vegas. Where bands played that were tributed. The, that uh, first one was Queen and Kiss. It was a great bill now in retrospect. Judas Priest, Def Leppard, all played. And then they had a band do a tribute to them. Of musicians influenced by them it was a great idea. It only lasted two two years. VH1, of course, wanted the original guys from Kiss there. That's who they were honoring. But at that point, it was still the Eric and Tommy band with those guys dressed as them. When Peter was asked about just coming, he declined. So I'm not going to go there and watch another guy dressed as me impersonating me. 
getting an award. I can't, I'm not going to come. And he stayed home. He never came. I talked Ace into coming because I said to Ace, I said, because I was a producer on this thing. And I said to Ace, I go, Ace, look. And then Gina Paul would not let Ace and Peter play with them. Just like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame back then, they wouldn't either. So I said to Ace, I go, hey, Ace, I'm putting together the tribute it was Rob Zombie, Scott Ian, Gilby Clark, Tommy Lee. We put that, that was the tribute to Kiss for that thing. I said, those guys said you can play with them. Go play with the tribute band. Because Ace wasn't going to come either. Why? Because he was not going to come and watch a guy dressed as him at an, being honored. So when I spun it to him, Play with the play with the tribute band. That'll be cool. You do it out of makeup and you get the hell out of there. That appealed to him and I talked him into doing it. But I, I don't know if I've ever said this on the air and this is the God's honest truth on my kids. I'll tell you this. We'll go through rehearsals. The rehearsals for the tribute band, which Ace was a part of, happened in LA. The taping of this show with a live audience happened in Vegas. So Kiss, even at that point, would have nothing to do with me, you know, I mean, again, the enemy. But I'm there back in the hallway, and I was dealing with making sure that the tribute band came together right. And uh, they were rehearsed. Ace was up in his hotel room at Mandalay Bay. Slash was in that tribute band, too. Even though Slash isn't a huge Kiss fan, they, you know, put some meat on the bone. So... Ace is, uh, the band is ready to play. They're ready to shoot that segment. The audience is there and Ace isn't showing up. So I'm like, we got a problem here. And everyone's turning to me. Hey, he's your boy. Get him down here. What's going on? Because it was like a surprise when he walked out with the, tri with the tribute. It, he didn't, he came out mid song or something. No one knew he was going to do it. And, uh, I call Ace, I mean, from the backstage of the Mandalay Bay, I call up to his room. I said, hey, man, what are you doing? Everybody's waiting down here for you. It's time to go. We got to do this. And he says to me, I can't do it. I said, what are you talking about? He goes, I can't do it. He said, I can't go down there. I can't watch a band, you know, my band, Kiss, playing with a guy Dressed as me up there, do it. I can't do it. I'm not doing it. I, I can't. I can't be down. I can't be around it. It's just. It's. It's. It's just. It's too weird. It's. It's wrong. I can't do it. So I'd have a real talk with him and be like, "Hey, man, you gotta. You gotta suck it up and do this." I said, "You don't have to do anything with them. You don't have to watch them. The, the, yours. The whole thing is a separate segment. But come down, do it. Let them answer the questions. Why you didn't play with them?" And then he did. He ended up coming down. And if you saw the show, he did come out and he did do it. But it was tough for him. So this idea when even now on this tour, when Gene and Paul say, well, it's on them if they want to show up, that they can kind of just knock on the backstage door with their guitar under their arm and say, hey, guys, I'm here. Can I come play a song? <laughs> what are you going to do? Have two guys dressed as the cat? What are you going to have the original guys dressed in street clothes and looking at uh, it's ridiculous. So if this wasn't the issue <laughs> that they continually say it's not and that nobody cares, why in 2019 in an interview that had nothing to do with me, is it being brought up again? 